Good morning. Welcome to Kahului Honganji's Sunday online service once again as we continue through this unpredictable terrain of the pandemic, coronavirus, COVID-19 has a lot of names. Um, but here we are once again with our online service and uh, so glad you can join uh, with me today, uh, this morning. It's actually not morning when I'm recording this, but it's the illusion, the magic of the magic of cinema. So, uh, this morning service just a regular family service, and uh, I just want to go over with you the uh, uh, order of service. What we're going to do today, we're going to begin with the Vandana Tisarana, as as we always do, and then we will chant the um, what's called the verses reaffirming the vow. After that, we will recite the Golden Chain of Love, and following the Golden Chain, uh, I will share a Dharma message with you. And uh, then we will have the uh, uh, Metta, or Loving Kindness Meditation, and then a few closing words. So please, uh, I hope you enjoy today's service, and please uh, uh, you know, take this time uh, to just sit and, and enjoy and reflect, and if you have a Butsudan at home, uh, please go ahead and, you know, you can pause it right now and go ahead and, um, and, and light the candle and incense if you, if you have that set up in your home, okay? So uh, that's, a, I think, a way that kind of makes it a little bit more special. So thank you very much, and we'll now begin our service. So we always begin by putting our hands together in Gasho and reciting the Nebutsu. So let's do that. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Buddhahood, I will reach. 
preach enlightenment, but unless my Buddha name resounds throughout the universe, may I not attain Buddhahood. I will practice the noble path, wisely, mindfully, free of greed, seek to reach the supreme way, be a guide to one and all. May my power shine great light to illumine and dispel the darkness of the three poisons and save all from suffering. With eyes of wisdom I'll remove the darkness of ignorance. I will close all evil paths, open gates of highest good. When I attain Buddhahood, light will shine throughout all lands, light brighter than sun and moon, outshining all heavenly lights, giving my virtues to all, not forsaking any one. I will proclaim the Dharma like the roar of a great lion, bowing before all Buddhas, steadfastly gaining virtues, with wisdom fulfilling my vows, I shall be a guide to all, like the wisdom of my teacher. May my wisdom also shine all throughout the universe and illumine one and all. If I shall fulfill these vows, may all lands tremble with joy from the heavens wondrous flowers rain down upon all the lands. Namandabu, 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 Golden Chain of Love I am a link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love that stretches around the world. I must keep my link bright and strong. I will try to be kind and gentle to every living thing and protect all who are weaker than myself. I will try to think pure and beautiful thoughts, to say pure and beautiful words, and to do pure and beautiful deeds knowing that on what I do now depends not only my happiness or unhappiness, but also that of others. May every link in Amida Buddha's golden chain of love become bright and strong, 
and may we all attain perfect peace. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida. Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu. Good morning. Please join me uh, as we recite the Nembutsu. Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu, Namo Amidabutsu. Today I, I would like to uh, talk to you a little bit about the Dharma, share some thoughts about the Dharma and uh, kind of how it applies, how it might apply to our, our life in the world today. Um, so I call this, um, so I, I call this uh, talk, this uh, message, Return to the Wholeness of Life. So Buddhism, you know, is, is a vast ocean of thoughts and ideas. And um, sometimes they seem abstract and difficult to understand. Um, but Buddhism developed over thousands of years and it covered, it traversed you know, many cultures and languages and nationalities. And as it um, moved through history, as it evolved and changed and grew, many different ways of interpreting Buddhism also grew, uh, which helped people in different cu cultures to understand the teachings in ways that were that harmonized with their own uh, cultural uh, uh, understanding. And so Buddhism never developed a single orthodox doctrine, you might say. Instead, the idea of multiple gates arose in Buddhism, in which the goal of Buddhism, uh, awakening, or sometimes called enlighten enlightenment, uh, uh, waking up to reality, to true reality, uh, could be reached from many different directions in many different ways. Uh, so in a sense, each of us enters uh, through our own gate, our own door. Um, you might say there, are, there is, uh, is many Buddhism, there is many different kinds of Buddhism, is many different uh, gates to, to awakening as uh, there are people to, who practice it. So um, we each follow our own unique Buddhist path. But uh, we shouldn't confuse the path with the goal either. The Buddha himself emphasized that the way, the way to enlightenment shouldn't be clung to. Uh, so there are many different ways uh, to follow Buddhism, uh, many different schools of Buddhism. Our school of Buddhism is called Jodo Shinshu or Shin Buddhism. Um, but we shouldn't, um, you know, just simply cling to the, to the, to the path itself as if it were the goal. So he told a story, uh, the, the Shakyamuni Buddha told this, the following story. He said, a man was going on a long journey to a faraway land, and at one point on his way he encountered a great river which cut across his path and prevented him from continuing. So patiently, without losing heart, this man immediately began to construct a boat a process which took him a very, very long time. When his boat was completed, he proceeded on his journey and he crossed over to the other shore of the river. During the time he was working on and using the boat, he naturally became very familiar and comfortable with it and felt great affection for it. Now, tell me, the Buddha asked his, his disciples, his students, Tell me, do you think it would be wise or foolish for this man to carry his beloved boat with him as he proceeds on his way? Now, the Buddha's disciples quickly answered, No, they said, to carry this boat with him after it has already served its purpose would indeed be foolish. It would just weigh him down. It is the same way with the teachings and practices. The Buddha told them, no matter how much we love and revere them, once, we have, once they have served their purpose and enabled us to awaken to true understanding, we must let them go and not become attached to them. They are like the wood of that man's boat and are of no further use. Because of historical circumstances, Buddhism became for many people much like the boat of that story. The difficulty of understanding Buddhist teachings 
coupled with the needs of, of the temples for revenue, uh, resulted in a Buddhist religion often focused on the afterlife, revolving around rituals, practices, and offerings aimed at helping ancestors in the next world, and, and also uh, generating income for the temple. Sadly, um, these death rituals, which should have been used to lead people to a deeper understanding of life, uh, to a desire for wisdom and, and enlightenment, awakening, instead became a, a duty of what they call familial piety, fraught with fears about the afterlife. Unfortunately, it was also often the only Buddhism most people knew. Hence, Buddhism became very much like the boat in the story. And even today, many people who come from Buddhist families think of it mainly as a religion of funerals, memorial services, and other relig uh, rituals concerned most, mostly with the departed members of their own families and focused on maintaining traditional ways and upholding a fixed, um, a fixed doctrine rather than as a path of awakening concerned with the liberation of all beings. In, in the Tani show, uh, a writing that uh, contains many of the sayings of Shinran Shonin, uh, uh, who is the founder of the Shin Buddhist uh, school of Buddhism. Uh, he, uh, Shinran said, as for me, Shinran, I have never said the Nembutsu even once for the repose of my departed father and mother. Because the reason for this is because all sentient beings, without exception, have been our parents and brothers and sisters in the course of countless lives in the, in the many states of existence. On attaining Buddhahood after this present life, we can save every one of them. In this simple statement, Shinran sums up the essence of Buddhism, which is awakening to the oneness of all life and all beings. All of the vast Buddhist teachings that seem so complicated are really summed up in these words. To be a Buddhist is not about performing rituals for the sake of departed family members. Every religion has those kinds of things. It's part of the sort of job of, 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 of religions, you know, temples and churches, to help people through life events. But the real job of being a Buddhist, the real task or goal, is to seek the wisdom and enlightenment which awakens us, us to deep awareness of this oneness of life, devoting ourselves to the happiness and the liberation of all beings. For Shinran, this enlightenment was not something we can accomplish through our, our limited and self-centered na nature, um, but which is inherent in all of reality. So we need to entrust ourselves to it, to say yes to the boundless compassion that em embraces us, yes to the life that always supports us. So in, and of our, in, in ourselves, it's very difficult for us to, to um, you know, uh, bring happiness and liberation, uh, awakening to all beings, even to ourselves, it's, it's practically impossible. But by opening ourselves to that boundless compassion, boundless life that we are all part of, realizing our oneness with all beings. We are changed and able to uh, naturally begin to be, a, be of help to others and just naturally be able to change things in the world. But um, in this day and age, it's very difficult because we human beings have come farther uh, away from this truth, I think, than ever before. If you look at the world around us and you think about what's happening today, we're drowning in a kind of anguish and fear of our own making, struggling to make sense of and to overcome the seemingly, seemingly sudden onslaught of complex problems, a worldwide pandemic, corrupt, col collapsing and unsustainable economic systems, insolvable, it seems, social problems, and perhaps most terrifyingly, the destruction of the interdependent natural environment upon which all life depends. 
All these problems we face are deeply interrelated and they share a common cause, human greed and selfishness. The wholeness of life, based on our interconnection with the natural world, including each other, is undermined and destroyed by my, all of us, we can say my, my insatiable desire to always have what I want for myself. More wealth, more power, more admiration, approval, flattery from others, right? We bring desolation upon the earth so as to be able to always have and to show off our latest toys, clothes, computers, phones, cars, and other possessions, houses, and so on, regardless of the waste and harm this causes. We always want to be fed, physically and spiritually. Yet, we just devour our food mindlessly, you know, without a thought of gratitude for the sacrifices made to support our desires, the animals and plants that have to die, the back-breaking labor to, to bring all those things to us, food and, and all the other consumables that we, we always want, you know? And, and, and while we consume it, do we have respect for, the, for all the lives that sustain us? Are we thinking, I'm so grateful, so sorry I, that I caused problems, so grateful for this, this wonderful gift I'm receiving? Do we say that? Do we even think it? We've become, I, I think, like spoiled children. Spoiled little children, never satisfied. Always crying out, crying and, and begging for new distractions and for more attention. We constantly crave for something to take away the darkness and emptiness inside us. Everything is disposable now in our modern world, including the lives of countless irreplaceable living beings that we continually use and then discard without a qualm, just like the wrappers and containers in which all of our fast food uh, is sold. Or we pretend that all these li living beings, these precious living beings, don't really exist. We don't think about them. We buy the food or whatever it is in the store. It looks very nice or we order it from Amazon, right? We, we pretend that all the people who, who, who have had to work so hard or have to give up so many things uh, for us to have what we want, we pretend they don't exist or don't really have anything to do with us, just like all the poor and the, and the homeless around us that we ignore or somehow reason away. I think the, stake, the stakes are infinitely higher now than they ever were before. We have nearly reached the point of no return, point of no re return, uh, in terms of saving the environment. As Jane Goodall just pointed out in an interview on CBS News a few days ago, but the potential danger of our selfish minds has always been the greatest threat to the happiness of human beings and all life on this earth. This was the great truth the Buddha revealed to us thousands of years ago. He taught that our ego-driven desires, unrestrained by self-awareness, compassion, and wisdom, inevitably enslave us to a life of relentless anxiety and dissatisfaction. During the very troubled times we are facing now, most people assume that this is just temporary, you know? This uh, COVID-19 will go away. Yes, it will go away, it'll become something else. Uh, they, they will find a cure or a vaccine, we assume. Experts will eventually solve all of our social and economic problems through the development of some new technology. Uh, and then we'll be able to go back to business as usual, right? Back to normal. But it's very likely that, that, is not tr that that's not the case. The problems we face now are too complex and too deeply rooted in centuries of unwholesome and selfish ways of thinking. So we may have reached a point where we just simply have to deal with the way we are. As Buddhists, we have an important obligation and role to play in creating new ways of thinking and doing new ways that are based on self-awareness 
and the bodhisattva aspiration for the happiness and dignity of all beings. It's not easy, but we have the Dharma, the Buddha's teaching, to guide us and also to share with the world. However, each of us needs to start with ourselves first. I myself need to listen and respond to the calling voice of Amida, which awakens me to my own selfish nature and simultaneously helps uh, me uh, put me on the path of awakening to my true self. As you are, Amida calls us, all of us foolish beings, to realize our oneness with infinite wisdom and compassion. The oneness, the infinite wisdom, the infinite compassion that surrounds and supports all life, all existence. It calls us to return to the wholeness of life and thus naturally to desire and strive for a better world for everyone. So I hope that we will reflect on these things and think about our role as Buddhists. Uh, you know, if you think about what can I do to make things better, it's kind of hard to have an answer. But if you start to really think about who you are and what we are called, what the reality of life that supports us, the oneness of life, returning to the oneness of life, I think we will naturally find the ways that you and I can make a difference in the world just by being our natural selves, by living our life in, our, in, a, in a simple and natural way. So thank you very much for listening. And uh, now I'd like to ask you to join me in Gasho and we will recite the Nembutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. And please join me now uh, for the metta, or the loving-kindness meditation. That is a way of expressing the wish, the wish of Amida Buddha for the happiness, uh, the, the well-being of everyone, everywhere. Thank you very much. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May I be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to me. May I live in peace and harmony. May my family be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my teachers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my friends be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May strangers be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May my enemies be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. May all beings be happy and well. May no harm or difficulties come to them. May they live in peace and harmony. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu.
Well, thank you for being part of our service today. Um, I, I think I neglected at the beginning to tell you that today is July. This is the service for July 5th. Um, and so I hope you all had, by the way, a nice, happy um, uh, Independence Day celebration yesterday for whatever you did. Um, and, uh, and, and enjoyed that time uh, together as much as we can with family. It's a little bit hard to get together, right, except with, with the people that we live with, but uh, we have to be careful about you know, anyone catching, uh, spreading the virus, if, uh, you know, if we're, if we're, and if we're all careless, that can certainly happen. Uh, so anyway, thank you so much for being with us today, and um, I want to uh, uh, invite you, of course, to join us again next week. Um, but uh, also to, to mention that the 17th and 18th, when we would normally have our, our bond dance and Hatsubon services, um, we will uh, be having an online Hatsubon service both evenings at 6.30. This will actually, that, that will be actually a live service and we'll be doing it through the Zoom software. Zoom is a kind of a meeting software so everyone can watch, particip uh, participate in the service. and. Uh, those families uh, who have the Hatsubon uh, Memorial first year bond service, um, uh, we will be able to read the names of the families. So this is a closed service, not public, so we can read the names of the families, of the, of the individuals who have passed away um, during this service. And however, if you'd like to participate, you have to call the office. Uh, we did send out some letters and some emails and um, uh, try to contact you in whatever way we could anyone who had a, a funeral la uh, during since the last Obon. Uh, so uh, if you do get a letter from us or an email or something, please respond. Let us know if, you're, if you'd like to participate or not and which evening. And if you, don't, if you do want to participate, of course, we'll send you the, the uh, information for getting uh, leaked uh, to the service. And you need a, a good internet connection and uh, something like a phone, iPhone, um, you know, smartphone or a a relatively modern computer uh, with a, with, with a, that you don't actually need to have the microphone uh, because you, we're, you won't be talking to us but you'll just be listening but you won't be watching it live so you do need a computer that can you know handle that um, relatively recent so that it can handle the software so um, do let us know about that um, right after the service uh, please uh, you'll know you'll see that there's some uh, uh, um, announcements on the screen. Okay, so thank you very much, and uh, please uh, stay well. And, oh, and by the way, the 26th, Sunday the 26th, uh, we will be having uh, uh, our Obon uh, major service, so that's a Sunday morning service just like this, and it will be a regular online service, but we will be, uh, you know, just really, uh, uh, the spirit of it will be just remembering all of our uh, departed family members and so on. So thank you very much, and let's conclude our service now by reciting the Namutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu. Namo Amidabutsu.